Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm back with another couple pantry meals for you. So I hope you enjoy. Tonight I'm making nachos from our fajita in a jar and burrito in a jar. It's one of our favorite ways to eat these. So I'm just going to go ahead and warm. This is the fajita in a jar. I will link the video to that in the description below. So I'm just going to go ahead and heat this up. And I'm going to open up the burrito in a jar and get that warmed up as well. These are some tortilla chips I had left over from December, if you can believe it. It is now March and they still are very fresh because I vacuum seal them right in the package so I'm just gonna spread some of those out. I like to do a double layered nacho. Then I've got some cheese here that I am going to sprinkle on this layer. And then I'm going to put the burrito in a jar on the bottom layer. Add another layer of chips then the fajita, and then more cheese. And then I'm just layering the top layer with the uh, burrito in a jar mixture, and I'm gonna get these popped in the oven. And here they are out of the oven. Top them with whatever you like. Tonight for dinner, for the side dish, I want to make some, oh, what do you call them? Funeral potatoes or cheesy potatoes. So I've got my uh, dehydrated potatoes here. I'm just going to get them into this bowl and cover them with hot water so they can rehydrate. And then these are just going to sit here until I'm ready to make dinner. Okay, so these are rehydrated they've been sitting for about two hours they're not fully um reconstituted but they are enough for me to work with and again this is what they looked like beforehand so they do really rehydrate beautifully you can do this you know rehydrate them for a much longer time but i'm just kind of getting everything ready and in the casserole dish so all i have to do is pop it in the oven so I'm going to pour these potatoes in here and gather the rest of my ingredients. Okay, so I chopped up an onion. This is some of my leftover cream of chicken soup that I had in the fridge. So we're going to throw that in there. Stick of melted butter. Cheddar cheese, it's still frozen because I totally forgot to take it out of the freezer, but that's okay. You know, measure cheese with your heart. And they are called cheesy potatoes, so. <laughs> cream. A couple big spoonfuls to start. And I am going to add some milk to this just because again these potatoes are not quite fully hydrated. All right, I'm gonna add a little milk and season this with some salt and pepper. All right, so I've sprayed my casserole dish. And, ooh, oh no, baby's get in there. And then I'm gonna top this with cheese and cover it and set it in the fridge. 
um, when it's closer to dinner time. I will bake this at 350 for about 45 minutes to an hour and then um, about 45 minutes because there's still one one other thing that we need to do before it is served. So I will see you when it's time to do that. All right, so it's been about uh, 40 minutes and I'm gonna show you how we finish these off. All right guys, so got another stick of butter melted. Now don't even come for me. Y'all know this is not a health food channel. So. And I've got some corn flakes. This is gonna be the topping for these potatoes. So I'm just gonna semi-crush these up. Not, not a whole lot. This, I mean, it's delicious just like that, but this, you guys, just takes it over the top. We're having meatloaf tomorrow, um, so, you know, I won't have to make, um, uh, we'll have green beans, meatloaf, and then the other half of this pan on the side. <coughs> Pardon me. Back in the oven for 15 minutes. So I just want to show you guys that, um, how I will keep this fresh once it's opened, because I typically only use cornflakes for cooking. We are not big cereal people here. This is a bag that I had some of my flour vacuum sealed in. I washed it. It was hung to dry. Yes, I reused them because I'm a penny pincher like that. vacuum seal until it until you can just start to like hear it push down <laughs> it will keep it good in your pantry for a very long time And just like that, you got it fresh and sealed for another day. We are also having some fried green tomatoes on the side. I will leave this uh, recipe. These were green tomatoes from my garden last year that I jarred up for fried green tomatoes in the winter. I will link that recipe in the description as well. Um, I've cooked these on a video before, so I'm not going to go through that whole process, but I start with flour, then do dip them in egg, and then seasoned cornmeal. This has the plain cornmeal, not jiffy mix, garlic powder, onion powder, salt, pepper, and paprika, and I will be air frying these, so you'll see those 
when I show you our plate. So the main course for tonight is like a French dip sandwich. So I've got a jar of my shredded beef. I'm just going to pour that juice and all into a container, and then I'm just gonna simply microwave that. So I found these sub buns in the freezer and my cast iron is on. Oh, I turned it off by accident. Let's just turn that back on. Whoopsie. I'm going to butter this and I'm going to put a little bit of garlic salt for that, you know, flavor flavor. And then I'm going to brown these on the skillet. The, what you call it, the beef is heating up in the microwave because I don't really feel like doing one more pot or pan. Hit it with a little garlic salt. Get that little maybe garlic bread action flavor going. Get these all nice and golden brown and delicious. All right, so got some good old promo loam. <laughs> that I had in the freezer. I'm gonna lay a little bit on this bottom bun. I probably should have not vacuum sealed this cheese quite as tightly as I did, but you know what? It's all good. My oven is on 350, it's ready to go. Oh, for the love. Or I should have probably put like some parchment paper in between it. That probably would have been the smart thing to do. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do, you know? What are you going to do? All right, we're going to take some of this beef. All right, and then this is gonna go in the oven until the cheese is nice and melty, and I'll be back and show you our plates. All right, guys, here is our dinner for tonight. We got that French dip-ish going on. Delicious fried green tomatoes and those cheesy potatoes. Our side for dinner tonight is going to be potato salad. It's beautiful outside. It's like 64 degrees, full sun, gorgeous, gorgeous day. So I want to grill some bratwurst and um, the potato salad I'm making is, I'm not gonna show you the whole thing because like it's potato salad, but, and I've done many a video on a potato salad. But I'm using my jarred potatoes, and I just want to kind of show you um, a couple clips on how I make that and how it's delicious. So I've got my uh, quart of canned potatoes in here, and I just chopped some onion and celery. I've got some fresh little butt nugs that are cooling from the water. I'm going to get my potato masher and kind of mash it up a little bit. I like my potato salad chunky yet creamy. I don't know if that makes any sense. So I will mash these down a little bit and then I'll just add 
whatever else I add to my potato salad, but I will give you a taste test. So this is what I'm talking about, like mashed up a little bit. So it's, you know, kind of still got those nice little chunks in there. Um, but when I mix all of my other stuff in, it'll make it nice and creamy. All right, here it is. It's a little more uh, creamier than I typically make it. I added maybe just a splash too much of pickle juice. If that's even a thing, I personally don't think so. But let's give it a little taste test. So if you're like, you know, have a potluck or something that you're going to or a cookout and you don't have all day, it's maybe short notice, you got some potatoes in your pantry, you can whip you up a potato salad in no time, honey. Hmm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And I used zesty pickle juice. You guys, killer. <laughs> so thanks for coming along. Um, I hope you enjoyed these couple meals from the pantry. I certainly enjoy doing them for you. So, um, thanks for being here. Thanks for being you. I'll see you next week with another set of pantry meals. And until next time, abundance and blessings to you. Bye-bye.